Hi and welcome to My Wildlife Year, week 49, uh, last one of the 40s, really near the end of the year now. Um, so yeah, so welcome and let's see what we've been up to this week. Just been a wee while ago, about an hour ago, lighting, down to lighten up the Christmas tree and I stop now, there was a tawny hill on the village green here, either the little green off to the side here, the big green over here, putting away. But it's gone. Oh well. I always keep a couple of little tubs handy on the windowsill here, uh, just in case I need them. My wife just told me. There's a small tortoise shell. Ah, actually, she said there's a butterfly in the bedroom. I'm assuming it's a small tortoise shell because it's nearly always a small tortoise shell that come in the house. So take this, pop it in this, and then put it in one of the buildings for the winter. And it was right, it is a small tortoise shell. There it is, caught in a little tub, so I'll take it outside now. Right, so go into the coal cellar here and such a label and we'll let it go it's now flowing onto me there it is come on off you go did it go out or did it go away anyway I can't tell if it actually flew up into the roof there or whether it flew out the door. But whatever, it's quite a mild day. Um, it's been raised by the central heating grun and it'll either hibernate in there or it'll go and find somebody else to hibernate. This is a little um, picture of a moth that I found in the house. It's called the 20 plumed moth, but it's not actually. 20 plumed, the plumes coming come from the sort of like the way the, the wings are into little plumes. Basically, each moth has um, four wings, and this moth, its scientific name now, bear with me because I'm not very good with scientific names. I have enough, uh, I really struggle with other languages and scientific names. I struggle enough with English as it is, as anyone that's watched my wildlife here will know uh, I get my, my words muddled up sometimes. So uh, scientific names quite often I struggle with. So the 20 plume moths is Aleucita hexadactyla. Now uh, I've put it up on the screen so you can actually see how it's probably, you know, it should be. Uh, written, uh, but the hex a bit tells us it's actually six, and that six it relates to the six plumes on each wing. So actually, there's twenty four plumes, and if you actually look closely at this photo, you would actually be able to see count up twenty four rather than twenty plumes. So this actually brings me on to scientific names versus common names. You'll notice during my wildlife year, I rarely talk about, uh, use scientific names. Um, occasionally I will, but it's mainly just common names. And the reason for that is I think it's more accessible for people, um, especially people like me that actually really struggle with the scientific names. Uh, but it can lead to problems because sometimes you never know what actually you're talking about when you use a certain common name. Good examples are Daddy Longlegs. Are you talking about a crane fly? a daddy long leg spider or a harvestman. It depends, it really depends where you are in the country or where you are in the world. Some uh, some places call uh, daddy long legs, uh, harvestman daddy long legs. Other places it is crane flies and then there's a daddy long leg spider or the cellar spider. Um, so, so you never know. Um, red shank, red shank, is it a bird? Or if you're actually out in the field and say I saw a red shank, have you actually seen the plant? called red shank. Uh, grayling, it's both a butterfly and a fish. The swift, most likely you're talking about the bird, the swift, but it is also the name of a moth. And common blue, common blue, um, butterfly again, but also 
damselfly, uh, very common sort of like so you know if you're actually just looking at a list of wildlife that was seen that just says common blue you don't know whether it was butterfly or damselfly obviously if it was a list of butterfly species and it says common blue there's a good chance that it is actually a butterfly so yeah so you never know uh, that so sometimes especially if you're recording wildlife it's actually really good to put down the uh, the, uh, this, the scientific name now it's fine, you can just use common names if all you're doing is one species group like butterflies or moths, just use the common names, that's fine. But if it's mi mixing up, sometimes it's actually better to be able to put the uh, common name with the scientific name next to it. Just so that if you send those records to somewhere, like your local environmental records centre, they know which species it is you're talking about. I'm here um, up near Farm Estate uh, near Selkirk, just been picking up some cool pellets. Uh, Tail, who's the uh, uh, farm manager here, the estate manager here, really into wildlife. This is a great estate, it's managed, you know, as a you know, farm in the state, but what's the uh, wildlife to it? You can actually see four or five up there, and this sort of like, you know, down here, it's so rich in wildlife, it's one of the most recorded sites um, around and just up there, bat box. So yeah, there's lots of uh, habitat boxes around here, um, lots of wildlife, lots of recording done um, right down to one time when I was doing some small mammal trapping here, uh, Tail actually gathered in some uh, small rodent droppings to give to the um, fungi experts who were also here doing some uh, recording and that uh, one of the fungi experts grew on fungi from the small mammal droppings and I think if I remember right it was three species of fungi they actually identified for that uh, you know so lots of recording going on here and lots of joined up uh, work as well so really excellent another bit of the steading and there's another bat box up there and also, during the summer, quite often there's a single probably a male uh, pipistrelle sort of like down in that gap, just there. Um, can't really see it and I'm not going to go and uh, shine a light in it. I don't think about it there just now, but I'm not going to go and disturb it. But there's a lot of bat droppings down the bottom there that I can see, actually see from here. So yeah, so, there we go. And some trees here that are going to be planted as well. Um, the estate unfortunately was hit quite badly by Esther Marvin, so lost quite a few of its um, big mature veteran trees, which is a shame, but that's... I was going to say that's nature, but is it? Are we getting all these storms because of global warming and climate change? You know, probably, maybe. Hopefully Storm Marvin, they're talking about it even a 100 year event. I'm really hoping it is. We really don't want um, events like that any more regularly. Right, well, picked up the air pellets from uh, earlier this morning and I packaged them all up into nice little uh, windows like that. And I'm now cooking them in this little oven here. I thought I better not use the main oven, I'd use the, the set of tabletop oven. I don't think my wife would like it, although she's out so she doesn't know what I'm doing. Uh, so I'm just cooking them on medium heat for 40 minutes. 
uh, just to kill off any bacteria and anything that may have laid eggs in there, sort of like caterpillar is moss, you know, and caterpillars go to hatch out and then they eat the things and just making sure that basically my oil pellets are kept nice and fresh for when I do the oil pellet workshops. Well, my wife <laughs> didn't know about the uh, oil pellets, but she's got back early, so she does now, but it's okay because she had a slight little prang in the car. Uh, the new car that is, um, and there's now a hole, a wee hole in the bumper that she can get a little finger in. So I'm off the hook because I've been sort of very good about that, so she can't say it about me using it um, to the, the desktop oven for uh, L pellets. So, hey, boy. One thing I've noticed on social media quite a lot recently, and I can actually hear one outside that is a blackbird, and people saying, oh, blackbirds um, got um, black blackbirds with black beaks, and they're proper blackbirds, they're, they are black, so they're not brown, the females are more brown, and they don't have a yellow beak, but the blackbirds, black blackbirds are males, but they're saying they've got, they've got black beaks. Oh, and someone will say, oh, they're from Scandinavia. No, that's yes, we do occasionally get so sort of like you know we do get some do come over from Scandinavia, but a whole basically a black beak tells you is it's a young blackbird. It's not to do with where it's actually come from geographically. It's basically young blackbirds in the first year still have a black beak, so they won't develop that yellow beak until next year's breeding season. So yes. Blackbird with a black beak, it's not from Scandinavia or Europe, it's just a young one. So, there, another myth busted. I've been quiet for a few days, but I've got another wood mouse in the humane trap in the kitchen. Don't look at me. And I've just noticed this trap here has also been tripped, so. That looks like two mice. I'm guessing a mouse, almost certainly. It was indeed a wood mouse. There it is. Big ears, big eyes, and a long tail. And it's a female. I already knew this one it was a wood mouse, because this was the one that was in the big trap. And Looking at the rear end, I reckon another female, but we'll see. Wasn't he great? It is another female. I've just hit, received this in the post. Um, the, the craft fair that I took part in as uh, was one of the wildlife specialists in November. Uh, it was run by Jane from uh, Beneath the Badger Tree. Uh, she does some wonderful uh, craft stuff and she just sent me this little Gorgeous bat! I am so over the moon. It is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, so, uh, go and check out the link to uh, beneath the badger tree will be in the in this video, uh, in the description of this video. Okay, so go and check it, check her out. Right, so I'm just going to wait for an overnight to lead a training workshop in small mammals, and so I'm just cleaned out Chonky. Give, put in uh, half a dozen mealworms and some water just to, to keep her going until I get back tomorrow evening. Um, probably a bit more than I would normally give her in a day, but it's just a little treat for her. Right, I'm here at RSPB Loch Winner uh, to lead a mammal workshop. It's been my first in-person workshop in well over two years, so I'm really excited. We're doing it outside, we've got some marquees over there. so. Really looking forward to it. I've uh, got some mammal tunnels out, unfortunately, I haven't been able to put mammal traps out, and I've got oil pellets as well for dissecting and a few other bits and pieces to look for tracks. So I've got some poo and some bones um, with me as well. So, yeah, really looking forward to the day. As long as the weather stays okay. It's a bit drizzly just now, but we've got the marquees, so we should be able to stay dry for most of it. So, it's a wee bit yucky today to say the least. Um, I don't know how you can see that it's very rainy and very wet and um, you can hear that there's rain 
round off the top of the gazebo pop up gazebos but we had two people turn up for the um, event so the workshop so we've covered we could do tracks uh, tra track uh, mammal track tunnels out this morning uh, we've got some wood mice um, tracks and we've also talked about um, other tracks and signs such as we never went out because basically we weren't going to find any signs in this any footprints would be you know washed away and whatnot and any poo was likely to be washed away too so uh, but I brought some skulls along uh, and also some of my poo collection and what else did we do uh, we went and looked at some books and that so this afternoon is owl pellet so just going to have some lunch uh, and then we're going to do a bit on owl pellets and then that'll be it and hopefully my fingers won't have dropped off again because although it's probably not so cold because it's wet it feels really cold and my fingers are really quite um, frozen solid probably a good description anyway right it's been a really good day so far uh, apart from the miserable weather so we'll see what this afternoon brings at the um, workshop that i was leading we came across quite a few of these uh, skulls uh, in the um in the oil pellets uh, these are fuel vol skulls we know they're vol voles because they've got ziggy zag uh, teeth that when you look at them from underneath, or if you're actually looking at a lower jaw from the top, they would be zaggy zaggy. But I actually also know they're full full because of there's a certain sort of like um, way the teeth go. But it, the easiest way, and I always say my mantra when it comes to uh, rodents and rodent skulls, if in doubt, pull the teeth out and look at either the teeth or the holes they leave behind. In the case of voles, you look at the teeth, uh, take it out, and if it's flat, Root, root on the bottom as well as the top then it's a field vole if it was a bank vole then the tooth would um the bottom of the tooth would form uh would have a little dent like that and would form into two roots so it would go, go like that so yes so the um that's how you tell the difference between a bank vole and a field vole and there's also this one here I have to admit, I cheated slightly. The lower um, skull I actually took with me. It was just so that I could show the difference because I thought there was a good chance we would get the common shrew skull, which is the one up the top, in one of the pellets, which we did. And the bottom one is a water shrew skull. You can see the, the difference. You notice a shrew skull because they're very sharp teeth and there's no gap between the molars and the incisors. Um, but also, there's red tips to the teeth it did give away it's a shrew uh, but the water shrew has a really hooked incisors uh, whereas the um the common shrew is less hooked incisors so that's how you tell uh, i can tell the difference between a common shrew and a water shrew skull so that's my wildlife year week 49 over and done with hope you enjoyed uh um just thinking about the end of the year i might do in the last week uh, um I don't know how I'm going to be quite busy because it will be between Christmas and New Year and get friends and family and st stuff like that. So I might uh, do a roundup of the year in my final week, looking at some highlights and you know and things that have happened throughout the year. Uh, but I'm also looking forward to what I'm going to be doing next year. I don't want to just keep doing the same thing. So I'm coming round to the idea of maybe still doing a weekly video, but just on one specific subject. So let me know what you think of that in the comments. So next week, week 50. So stay safe and keep enjoying the wildlife and see you then.